Hi everybody, my name is Caesar, and I'm here to talk to you today about vitamin supplements. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of background information. Uh, vitamin supplements are a $28 billion industry, and about half of Americans take these supplements. Uh, having uh, said that, uh, many medical professionals and nutritionists argue that supplements are necessary because uh, most people don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, most people eat processed foods which lack essential nutrients, and the soil in which our food is grown is depleted, thus lacking essential minerals. And uh, after this, my major claim is uh, vitamin supplements are counterproductive to their claims. So um, I will prove that by first stating that uh, vitamin supplements fail to provide any health benefits. Uh, secondly, I will say that vitamin supplements are most likely to car cause harm. And uh, third, the average American diet provides enough vitamins. <clears throat> so to my first point, um, vitamin supplements fail to provide health benefits. I prove this by uh, saying that they are ineffective at reducing risk of disease and cancer, as found in two studies in the Annals of Internal Medicine and uh, in one from uh, the Cancer Research Center in Seattle. <clears throat> the first uh, review study looked at clinical trials that included a total of 450,000 older adults. Altogether, these researchers didn't find clear evidence of a beneficial effect of supplements on cancer and heart diseases. <clears throat> in their second study, the researchers examined whether higher doses of multivitamins and minerals could prevent heart attacks, strokes, and death in 1,700 people who have already had a heart attack. After an average follow-up of five years, the results didn't show a difference between participants who took dietary supplements and those who did it. Um, these conclusions were drawn by British and US academic, academics at University of Warwick and at the John Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore and published in the Annals of Internal Medicine, as I stated before. <clears throat> and on to the, the, the research by the Cancer Research Center in Seattle. After they followed up to more than 160 postmenopausal women during the 1990s, for an average of eight years. And the researcher study provided convincing evidence that multivitamin use has little or no influence on the risk of cardiovascular disease or the mortality in postmenopausal women. Um, and then the Annals of Internal Medicine also did a third study which uh, found that supplements were ineffective at reducing cognitive decline of the elderly. And these were, they studied vitamins A, C, and E, which are known as antioxidants. Um, and these antioxidants are supposed to help the immune system fight off diseases. All right, and to, moving to my second point, vitamin supplements are more likely to cause harm um, and increased chances of prostate cancer and higher death rates according to the Journal of American Medical Association, which was published in 2007. In this analysis, uh, researchers studied more than 232,000 people, and in the review the, of the data collected during 78 randomized trials throughout the years of 1977 and 2012, the trials uh, found that death was 4% higher in people who took antioxidant supplements over a given time period, these re results held true whether supplement users were healthy or ill. <clears throat> and then uh, moving on to a second study done by the University of Minnesota, um, they also found that in older women whose average age was around 62, um, who took supplements had an average of 2.4% increase in risk of dying over the course of their 19 year study which ranged from 1986 to 2004. <clears throat> and then also in the claim that it has uh, increased the chances of prostate cancer, there was a study done in 2001 <clears throat> and published in 2008 suggesting that neither uh, vitamin E um, decreased cancer risk. The new findings show vitamin E may actually have the opposite effect. <clears throat> And then uh, to my third point, uh, the average American diet provides sufficient vitamins. Americans in general are overfed. 
<clears throat> as stated by Edgar Miller of the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine said, there are some that advocate that many nutritional deficiencies in our diet, the truth is though, we are in general overfed. Our diet is completely inadequate. <clears throat> so the industry creates a perception of deficiency amongst Americans and these companies are marketing products to us based on perceptions of deficiencies. They make us think our diet is unhealthy and that they can help us make up for these deficiencies and stop chronic illnesses. The group that needs these is very small. It's not the general population. This message is aimed at people who have no signs of nutritional deficiency, meaning most supplement users in the United States. Uh, so to conclude, uh, my major claim is that vitamins supplements are counterproductive to their claims due to research finding that vitamin supplements fail to provide any health benefits and are most likely to cause harm. And the average American <coughs> diet uh, provides more than enough vitamins. So supplementing the diet of well-nourished adults has no clear benefit and might even be harmful. All right, Caesar. I thought that the uh, setup was really solid. You have good information about why we're talking about this, given how big the supplement industry is and how many people take supplements. And then your arguments, your secondary points are very clearly laid out and, and signposted as you get to each of those. So those are fine. I thought you explained them pretty well. The first one seems basically like it's uh, arguing that it's not useful for two things in particular, uh, cancer and cardiovascular disease, then you kind of toss in some cognitive decline stuff at the very end of that section. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it didn't belong there. It, it does belong there. But like I said, the first, like 80% of the evidence that you had on that point dealt with both cancer and cardiovascular disease. Are those the main reasons that people are motivated to take supplements? I think that would be something that would be helpful to demonstrate uh, as part of the argument and show that there's a little bit more clash on that particular point. The idea that they're counterproductive uh, to some degree, um, the information here is a little bit sketchy. The stuff on uh, the antioxidants, I'm not sure that the statistical difference, that 4% difference, um, would be scientifically uh, uh, significant, but uh, it certainly gives you cause to uh, hesitate and pause in making a decision about whether or not to take supplements if uh, it, you know, if there's no significant difference or the difference is, you know, in a negative way. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's tied to how much that people take or when they start taking it or how regular they are at taking those kinds of supplements. So there could be a little bit more information there. I thought you did a good job citing all of your information, giving us qualifications and telling us, making sure that we knew where the information came from. You summarized uh, it all pretty well. Um, so that part's good. <laughs> Uh, there is way too much reading in the presentation. I think that undermines your credibility a little bit. I did like the fact that you had kind of a qualifier that said, look, there are people that it might be beneficial for, but the vast majority of people, uh, they don't need these kinds of supplements. Um, but without knowing what who fits into which category, I think that's a potential a liability uh, and a, maybe a weakness that the uh, respondent can look at. Uh, and we got our first Porky Pig exit right at the end. You know, that's all, folks. <laughs> you could have skipped that and been perfectly fine. Thank you.